Hello everyone, this is Generic Bowling Announcer coming at you live from the beautiful Garage Bowling and Billiards on Capitol Hill near downtown Seattle for the inaugural Capitol Hill Challenge. Uh, as our players are finishing up their last practice shots before the match here, uh, let me explain that we have a wonderful match on tap for you today. We have PBA Pro Cameron Weir, Brunswick Pro staff member, uh, 2015 Qatar Open champion, taking on Tim Watanabe, who's a uh, decent house bowler uh, with $300 in career PBA earnings. So on paper, this is quite a lopsided match, but as we know, anything can happen. Uh, the lane conditions today will be very difficult. We're bowling on what is essentially a stripped oil pattern, as you can see by that ball reaction there. Uh, there's very little oil in the heads and uh, quite a bit of carry down uh, from a lot of open play down lane. So shot making will be at a premium today uh, and spare shooting as well. So let's uh, do the handshake. We're bowling on lane eight today at Garage Bowl and our competitors wish each other luck. Uh, we're bowling for pretty big prizes here. Got a lot of money and some pizza up for grabs. Let's talk to Cameron Weir. At the garage, we're bowling on pretty much stripped lanes. Uh, with uh, PBA Tour Pro Cameron Weir, how do you feel going into this match here? Because we're bowling for a lot of money, uh, pizza. I'm still gonna win. You're still gonna win? Yeah. I don't know. You didn't have a very good look in practice. Uh, uh, my spare shooting carry me to victory. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Cameron says his spare shooting will be his key to victory today. Let's open up the match. Tim's first shot and comes up a little light. Leaves a four eight. Uh, very tough spare to pick up with the dry heads and uh, down lane oil. But let's see how he handles this. Hooks at it. And perfect. Opens up with the mark. Cameron's first shot. Very, he had very little shot in practice. His ball was hooking early and then rolling in dead straight in the bat last 20 feet or so. Oh, he just barely shaves the six. Can't afford to miss any of those spares. Okay, Tim's up in the second frame working on a spare. Looks good. And dead flush. Let's watch, see where he's playing. So he's throwing the uh, urethane ball, Brunswick True Motion, right up 17 and 18, out to about maybe 13 or so at the break point, uh, not giving the pocket away, and that's what you got to do on a tough shot like this. Beautifully executed, dead flush. So Cameron has elected to go with the Vapor Zone today, one of Brunswick's vintage releases, and oh, gets a big break there going Brooklyn. Part of the challenge rules today is each competitor was only allowed two bill, uh, bowling balls in the building. So Tim has the urethane ball and also his Radical Katana Dragon, very aggressive. Oh, that's a nice shot there by Tim, shreds the rack. Um, and Cameron has uh, gone with his Vapor Zone, as we said, and also his DVA Poison. So that's the stuff we're going to be bowling with today. And Cameron going Brooklyn again, routine spare on the five pin. And uh oh, oh my goodness, that's uh, something you rarely see from a PBA professional whipping a five pin. Can't take anything for granted on this tough shot. So Tim now with the lead. Oh, makes a really good shot there, wraps to 10. He's definitely got a better look than Cameron, so as long as it holds up, he should be uh, definitely in the driver's seat. Cameron now up in his fifth frame, trailing by 20. Hasn't hit the head pin on the right side yet, and still hasn't. But, oh, gets a huge break, kicking out the 6, 9, 10. Let's see that one again. Uh, he's sliding around board 35, uh, just left of middle arrow. Um, definitely needs a little bit more angle through the front, but he's in a little bit of a trap here because if he gets it too far right, the ball's got so little back end motion that he's going to miss the head pin right, so he's always... Uh, fearful of that, but it's another big break. I think Cameron's just trying to keep it in play right now and stay out of trouble. All right, Tim up in his sixth frame, leads by 20. And that's gone. That's, uh, yeah, your thing's not going to recover from there with all that carry down. So he leaves the 1, 2, 4, 8, 10 washout. He's going to try to kick that head pin over into the 10. And that's too far right. Looks like he's going to get four. He does. So first open frame for Tim. Now Cameron, see, can he take advantage of that? Nope, and that's what we were talking about, getting it a little bit too far right. It's just straightened out in the back, and he washes out there, so he's going to get the two here. Oh, what? Did I? Did that just really happen? No way. Let's see that one again. Hey, boy, it must be nice. Head pin off the wall, helicopters across, and makes the messenger 10 for the washout spare. Unbelievable. So that spare was huge as it kept the match close. Tim has four pin lead. Both players spared in the seventh. We're going on to the eighth frame, and Tim, nice shot there. Shreds the rack, shakes him up. Now Cameron, can he answer with his own strike in the eighth? That's left again, and oh, trips the six forward, a la Chris Barnes. Okay, as we can see, five pin lead for Tim, hitting into the all-important ninth frame. This will put all the pressure on Cameron if he can peer one off, and he does. Really good shot there. As you can see, he has switched to his Katana Dragon as that urethane uh, 
didn't quite have the back end motion that he was looking for. And that ball, as you can see, is actually turning the corner a little bit through all that carry down. Okay, Cameron in the ninth needs this one to stay close. And that's left all the way, no chance. Baby split, so if he makes this, he still forces Tim to mark in the 10th. Big spare here. And no, oh, just got away from him. So Tim now, a situation, he needs eight pins to shut out Cameron. That'll put him at 180, uh, 186. Cameron can only get to 185. And oh, gets a little bit of a break there, hits light, and gets exactly the eight he needs. So Tim is the winner of the first match. It'll be 186 to 174. This is a best of three match. So let's start game number two. Cameron's going to lead off. And oh boy, that ball checked up immediately. Leaves the 1369. Doesn't even hit the head pin. But hard and straight out the spare, and he has it. Staying so Tim definitely had command of the pocket. Let's see if that continues. Staying with his dragon, that looks really good. And a little half pocket leaves the 10. He will take that. Now the key is, can he make these corner pins? They're tough when uh, the heads are so dry, but he looks like he has that one. So we're off dead even after one. Cameron in the second. Trying to get the ball to push through, and oh, oh another big break. Watch the four pin here on this carry. The two is going to go off the wall. Get the four, and it's going to be sent into the six, tipping it forward. What a huge break for Cameron. Tim now up in his second frame. Made a real good shot in the first, left a 10 pin. And really posts that one well. Oh, brutal break. Leaves a ringing 10 on a really good shot. That's real tough when you see your opponent get a huge break like Cameron did, and then you pure one and leave a ringing 10. But that's, that's bowling. You just got to move forward. Cameron in the third. Can he take advantage of that lucky hit? And he does, tripping the 410 out. Wow, so all of a sudden Cameron now has the lead. Tim in the third. And another quality shot, high flush in the pocket. Tim has really afforded himself well in this match. He's splitting his target right between 17 and 18 where he's aiming. And that ball is set up absolutely perfectly. A little bit of tip in the back end. And uh, he's made some quality shots so far in this match. Now Cameron up. All right, Cameron now in the fourth frame, leading by 11. Working on a double, his first double of the match. And again high, leaving the 6-10. Going cross lane at it. Taking the lane out of play. And oh, cutting a little close there, shaving it, but spare nonetheless. Now Tim in the fifth frame. Oh, same thing, goes high, leaving the 6-10. And on the spare. So we have a battle going on here in our second game. This is kind of what we anticipated when we found out what the oil pattern we were bowling on today would be. Uh, kind of a low scoring, grind it out sort of match. Uh, make your spares and uh, catch a double here or there and you're probably going to win. Looks that way so far. Cameron with a spare in his fifth frame. Now Tim. And that's going to check up early. Out of trouble. Leaves the six only. Uh, a lot of high hits today, but not a lot of splits. Very interesting. So looks like it does uh, come down to a spare shooting match. And Tim perfect on the spare. Cameron up in his sixth frame. He's trying to get the ball out onto the lane so it doesn't check up so soon, but he's still coming in high, leaving the six. And he has it. And here is Tim now in his sixth frame. Needs to get on the right track here. Gone high the last few. That looks real good. High flush. Beautiful shot. Let's take a look at the scores. And as you can see, not an open frame thus far in this game between our two competitors on a very tough oil pattern. Should be a good finish. Let's see Cameron in the seventh frame. Again, looks high. And 6-10 broke up the split. Cross lane up. Look out. Oh my goodness, by a whisker. Let's see that again. Bowling is a game of inches, ladies and gentlemen. And this proves it. Watch, he punches the 6 and just, just enough of the 10 to knock it over. That's why you go straight at your spares, kids. Okay, Tim now up in the seventh frame, looking to double and take the lead in the match. Looks good, and shakes them up. Very excited about that. Good shot. Now, Cameron, can he respond? And that is left all the way. Tough double wood there, 3-9. He's going to go straight at it like Brunswick legend Walter Ray. He's uh, well known for going straight at the double wood, and he has it. Beautiful spare by Cameron. We have reached the eighth frame. Tim is now up, working on a double, going for the first turkey of the match. And looks good, dead flush, what a shot. That turkey gave him a 17 pin lead with two frames to go. Uh, Tim real soft with it at the bottom, staying a little bit more up the back than he usually does to control the down lane motion. And this ball was just absolutely perfect off his hand. 
great result. So now Cameron back to the wall. I don't think Tim's going to give this one back, so Cameron really needs to throw a strike here to get... Oh, that was probably his best shot of the match. Hits the pocket, leaves a flat 10 with that poor entry uh, angle. But makes a spare, so Tim now up in the ninth. This will put the match away here if he can strike. Oh, got a little soft with it, and oh, disaster. The 4, 6, 9, 10. And oh, no, he short counts himself. So we have a new match now. So with that open, Tim's max score is now 208. Cameron can strike out for 210, so he needs to go 9 spare strike here to force Tim to double. That's left again. Leaves the 5 pin. Should be routine. Has already missed one of these earlier. Goes hard and straight at it this time and nails it. So very important fill shot here for Cameron. He needs all 10 to force Tim to double to win the inaugural Capitol Hill Challenge. Can he get all 10 to put the pressure on Tim? And Brooklyn again, and oh, unreal. Gets a break, tripping the 5-9 out, so that is a strike. Tim now needs to double to win the match. And that's left. Will he carry the Brooklyn? Oh, my gosh. High flush Brooklyn leaves a stone 10 on the Brooklyn side. That's a very high percentage hit. Watch the 3-pin somehow comes off the wall and misses the 10. So, ladies and gentlemen... We are going to Game 3, the rubber match, to decide the Capitol Hill Challenge. Very tough loss for Tim as he, uh, if he had just gotten the count on that split in the ninth, this would have been a totally different scenario. Let's talk to Cameron Weir. Okay, Mr. Weir, you, uh, you escaped with the victory there by four pins. Uh, how do you feel going into the third and final deciding game? I feel pretty good. Feel pretty good? I mean, you haven't really hit the pocket in two games, so... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? All right. It's all about knocking down ten pins. That's the luck, sir. There you go. Cameron does not seem to be the least bit concerned about his look. And now Tim leading off the game three. Oh, terrible break leaves the 4-9. First really bad break of the match for either player. Uh, Tim's going to go for this going cross lane. Just misses it. Good, good attempt. Uh, eight out, though, to start the deciding game. Cameron in the first. And that's way left. Oh, reverse wall shot. <laughs> Runaway Brooklyn for the strike. Okay, Tim in the second now. Oh, that ball straightened out a lot in the back. Oh, when he rolls the two. That's his first really good break of the match. Kind of payback for that 4-9. As you can see, the ball goes a little long with Ford makes, turning that corner and gets a friendly roll of the two forward. Now Cameron up in his second frame. That's, wow. Oh, boy, that was ugly. Uh, leaves to 1-9. Something makeable, at least. He's going to go hard and straight at it. And perfect. So, two marks for Cameron. And he has a lead early in this third match. Okay, we're going to move on to the fourth frame now. Tim is working on a spare. Really needs a strike here. Oh, man, another ringing 10. He's really made some quality shots and not a lot to show for it. It's hard enough to hit the pocket, but when you do and that happens, it's just demoralizing. Tim has been perfect on his 10 pins. He's 4 for 4. Make it 5 for 5, keeping himself in the match. Now Cameron, can he put the heat on? He does with a Brooklyn strike, switching to his DVA poison. Now Tim, likewise, another Brooklyn. Boy, these uh, these lanes have gotten ugly, ladies and gentlemen. Cameron for a big double to increase his lead to 12, and trips the six again. His carry has been unbelievable on the off hits, and um, his spare shooting obviously very good as well. But he's got the lead. Tim needs to answer here in his sixth frame, halfway through our. Deciding match goes high, leaves a 6-10. Tim likewise has been very solid on his spares tonight. Cameron in the seventh. Oh, another trip four. At least it was in the pocket, but boy, unbelievable trips on those fours. Tim in the seventh. And a runaway Brooklyn. Wow. Here we are in the eighth frame. Cameron leads by 21 at this juncture. If we can just mark out, I think it'll be very difficult for Tim to come back with as ugly as the lanes have gotten. Leaves a three pin by itself. Good break. And routine spare here to maintain a 21 pin lead. And Tim has chosen to go back to his urethane for one shot here. Let's see how it works. That's left all the way. Leaves the six pin. Must convert this. Can't afford to give any more pins away. Cross lane at the six pin. Uh-oh, that's got a layoff, and it hooks too much, even that urethane ball, wow. 
So Tim's in a very tough spot. Cameron in the ninth. This will pretty much seal the deal if he can carry this one. And he gets it with the trip four to win the match. Unreal. Well, kind of a fitting end to the way that match has gone. Uh, Cameron got a ton of breaks on off hits. And he gets one more to seal the deal and win the inaugural Capitol Hill Challenge here at Garage Bowl. Congratulations, Cameron. Tim will finish it out in the final score. We have uh, 183 to 205. Cameron is the winner, defeating Tim 2-1. to one. And on behalf of everyone here at the Capitol Hill Challenge, this is Generic Bowling Announcer thanking you for tuning into our coverage today. Congratulations to the one and the only Cameron Weir on his title. And we'll definitely be back with more uh, challenges, more bowlers, and of course very tough lane conditions. And uh, we'll see you next time.